Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the PC Blues Show. The PC Blues Show can be found at pcblues.com on the internet, or you can find it on... No, it's just on the internet, for now. It may one day become a printed magazine, it may become a book, or it may even become... Uh, letters written with a stone on the wall inside a cell, depending on how our country goes with uh, protecting its citizens' freedoms. Uh, tonight I'd like to talk about disengagement of people from their communities, from their families, from their friends, and in particular from politics and with the general running of their uh, running of their communities, their cities, their states, uh, their countries, and the worlds that they live in. Uh, some people complain about you know people becoming disengaged from the process of politics, uh, and by that they mean you know no longer contributing to the decision making processes, uh, be that you know making a meaningful vote or, um, <clears throat> you know, presenting uh, their desires to their uh, political representative, right? Whether that's at the local government level, the state government level, or the federal government level. Now, that's the, the different government levels in Australia. Um, but, you know, likewise, there's probably a similar you know, hierarchy of uh, places in the country that you live in that you can make representations uh, for the purposes of getting um, policies uh, that are in your interests, okay? For example, if you think that, um, you know, your country <clears throat> shouldn't have a free trade agreement with another country when the uh, name of the agreement is complete bullshit um, when you actually look at the outcome of the agreement or, or consider that um, you know free trade agreement between two countries is really just like special favoring between the two countries and so the idea of like global free trade is kind of being undermined by the people who are espousing it in the first place um, you know, you can actually do something about that other than bitch about it. You can, um, you know, you can get in touch with your representatives. You can write letters, you can join a group, you can let people know what you think, perhaps by putting a show on the internet or, uh, you know, spruiking your values down at the pub. Um, anyway, there's a lot of different things that you can do to uh, become engaged, right, with... Um, you know, with people who are in positions to actually make things happen in the world around you. Um, it's, uh, without actually getting really involved with the process of government, um, you can support groups that already do that, okay? And in a country like Australia, where we a lot of people have a lot of disposable income. Um, a small portion of your income could be set aside to, you know, be a member of, say, Amnesty International. Okay, Amnesty International um, work really hard to secure the freedom of people who are imprisoned or tortured for political reasons. So that basically means that um, the organizing or trying to form an organization that's in opposition to a regime that's in power of a particular country or um, trying to raise awareness about um, you know indecent acts that a particular government is um, you know is conducting and uh, in doing so the government has unfairly imprisoned them tortured them uh, or just made them disappear which has uh, become a verb that's used in the human rights 
uh, movements to describe a person that has just gone missing, okay, um, because they were considered a threat to the um, power of a particular party, a particular government. Um, now, Amnesty International are uh, pretty, pretty good in terms of an organisation that, uh, you know, tries to achieve political ends with non-violent means. That's something I'm quite interested in, and that's why I'm a member of them. And you can also make a monthly contribution, um, and they will use that money as best they can to help that sort of thing. Another uh, group is someone like Greenpeace, or you know, there might be an environmental concert, you know, conservation group that you know may have aims that match, you know, that are, that are aligned with your um, beliefs and the things that you would like to see happen in the world, and that's just a way of making a difference uh, with very little effort. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another thing that made me think about that was that. Um, you know, I wonder how much of my tax money is collected by the government and spent on projects and things that I really strongly disagree with. Now, I understand in the democracy you vote once every few years to put people in power and those people are then consider themselves to have a mandate to do whatever the fuck they like. Um, because they've been voted in and, you know, not everybody agrees with everything that they do. Uh, but when, you know, 70% of the country's people disagree with something that the government is suggesting that suggesting to do, then, you know, there's a possibility that it might not be in the interests of the people. Um, and that might actually be a good time to listen to the people's will and instead of, you know, lying your way to the next election victory. But anyway, that's, that's by the by. Um, I wonder how much of my tax is spent on, say, fighting in Iraq, uh, you know, using violence to uh, achieve a political end, uh, you know, spending money on killing and imprisoning people instead of, you know, helping them perhaps identifying the causes of their griefs that kind of thing. Um, you know, I wonder how much of my money is being spent on that uh, compared to the amount of money that, say, I spend voluntarily on, you know, helping other people, alright? Um, or how much of my tax money is spent in on policies that I like and I agree with. Anyway, it would be good to be able to measure that. I'm reading a book at the moment by John Pilger called Freedom Next Time. Uh, John Pilger is a journalist that uh, exposed a lot of what um, has happened in Cambodia and Vietnam and uh, he's put, this book is writing about um, you know what happened to the Chagoshans, right, which was a British colony in the middle of the Indian Ocean you may have heard of Diego Garcia, uh, an uninhabited island which has a US Army base on it. Now, it used to have 2,000 people on it who had been living there for a couple of centuries, um, but they got moved off and the British government kind of lied to the United Nations and to the world about it um, because they had actually secretly sold the island to the US to use as a base so that they could, you know... Um, maintain greater control over the Indian Ocean. Um, 